Uh, good morning, good afternoon, everyone, uh, depending on where you are. I'm Antra Sinha from Gyadi, the Vaccine Alliance. Um, so it's a pleasure to be here, and uh, thanks for the opportunity to speak about Gyadi's expanded support for use of diagnostics in Gyadi-supported countries, and specifically focusing on diagnostics for cholera prevention and control. As some of you may know, Gabi is building on the success of the Yellow Fever Diagnostics Initiative and starting support for making fit for purpose cholera, meningococcus, measles, rubella, and typhoid diagnostic tests available. This decision um, was taken by the Gabi board in December 2021. And there is a sound rationale backing this decision. Fit for purpose diagnostic uh, tools are critical for countries' abilities to plan and implement targeted vaccination programs. But there are currently market failures for such tools. Also, following the introduction of the Diagnostics Initiative for Yellow Fever, the number of African countries at high risk for yellow fever outbreaks that can confirm at least some yellow fever cases has increased from one to four without having to shift to regional reference labs and thus decreasing the overall time to diagnosis, uh, diagnosis significantly. Further, African countries at high risk of yellow fever are now able to request Gavi funded shipments of yellow fever molecular test kits. We expect the number of countries able to confirm their own cases to increase considerably once reliable molecular testing is in place. Other benefits from Gabby's support for diagnostic capacity can include better matching campaigns to a disease burden and improving equity by addressing the most vulnerable. Broadly, um, Gabby funding will support diagnostic test procurement, test kit evaluation, development and dissemination of guidance on use of diagnostic tests to support immunization programs and quality assurance. This will entail collaborations with individuals and groups within and beyond the Gavi Alliance. Preventive vaccination drives in Gavi eligible countries certainly need better diagnostic capacity. And this was echoed by Dr. Asmin as well um, in, in the start of this session. Oral cholera vaccine preventive campaigns included in the 2018 vaccine investment strategy were to be targeted at cholera hotspots. Current cost forecast for OCV outbreak and response campaigns during Gavi 5.0 is approximately 350 US, uh, million, uh, US dollars in millions. And this is largely due to limitations in availability and use of cholera diagnostics. Hotspots will be targeted um, for vaccination using surveillance for suspected cholera and acute watery diarrhea. But improved cholera diagnostic capacity in Gavi eligible countries would allow a much needed shift to using surveillance data on diagnostically confirmed <laughs> cholera cases for targeting <laughs> campaigns. Is the sound quality still okay? It's just a just, 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 just. Sounds, 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 sounds. <laughs> <laughs> uh, may I continue or um, do I need to repeat something? Oh, no, you can continue. Thank you. Improved diagnostic capacity is needed to increase the efficiency of preventive vaccination. Preventive campaigns with high coverage will likely end cholera transmission in many areas, but cannot uh, confirm without cholera diagnostic capacity. Cholera, as Dr. Asman had again pointed out earlier, is only a portion of suspected cholera and AWT cases in hotspots. Further, some cholera outbreaks have occurred soon after preventive campaigns, example in areas with high population mobility and turnover. If diagnostic confirmed cholera data were already widely available for targeting, the estimated number of hotspots where preventive campaigns are needed could be cut by roughly half. And this estimated efficiency 
will likely increase in each round of repeat campaigns. In the cholera diagnostic market, culture is mainstay. Again, this was mentioned previously, but there are major gaps in availability and logistical and technical challenges to scale up. Rapid diagnostic tests are potentially the most practical and cost-effective options for addressing the surveillance questions relevant to Gavi vaccination programs. There are currently no validated commercially available RDTs and several promising cholera RDTs are commercially available and WHO uh, pre-qualification standards exist. PCR tests are a um, viable alternative to culture and RDTs, but are markedly more expensive and complicated. And validated multiplex PCR tests are available. Based on currently available evidence, which of course will be refined as further studies are undertaken in this context, Gavi funded cholera diagnostic support would be aimed primarily at supporting continuous surveillance for cholera in hotspots identified um, from surveillance data on suspected cholera cases. And to keep the volume of testing manageable, only a selection of samples from suspected cholera cases would be tested. The goal would also be to test enough samples in a given area to be able to determine if prevalence of cholera was above or below a specified threshold. And Gavi funded cholera diagnostic support could be used in a limited manner for other purposes, example, outbreak detection, but the main focus would be on targeting OCB preventive campaigns. So just to sum up, there are two broad goals of Gavi's investments in cholera diagnostics by 2025, which include a market shaping component and a decision impact. From a market shaping perspective, Gavi seeks to have at least two validated commercially available tests of a novel type, example RDTs, and the decision impact would entail use or systematic collection of data for use of novel diagnostic results in applications for Gavi support. And with that, I'd like to end my presentation and thank you all very much.